Good morning, everyone. Um, so today I'm going to be continuing my topic on sleep apnea. And just a friendly reminder to everyone, our Facebook family and Zoom room, this month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So please ensure that you are getting yourself checked and that you're supporting your local hospitals and, and communities as they do this important outreach. And may I have permission to share my screen, please? So we went over last week, um, the definition of sleep apnea. We also went over um, some of the signs and symptoms when someone has sleep apnea. And so this is, we're just gonna pick up and continue further into that topic as my screen log. So this is where we left off um, last week on how sleep apnea is diagnosed. So management and treatment of sleep apnea. So there's conservative treatments in mild cases of obstructive sleep, sleep apnea. Um, overweight persons can benefit from losing weight. Individuals with obstructive sleep apnea should avoid the use of alcohol and certain sleeping pills, which I discussed. And in some patients with mild obstructive sleep apnea, breathing pauses occur only when they sleep on their backs. So in such cases, using wedge pillow or other devices that help them to sleep in a side position may help. So your treatments, mechanical therapy, there's positive airway pressure therapy. This is preferred initial treatment for most people with obstructive sleep apnea. With PAP therapy, patients wear masks over their nose and, and or mouth. An air blower gently forces air through the nose and or mouth. The air pressure is adjusted so that it is just enough to prevent the upper airway tissue from collapsing during sleep. There are several styles and types of positive ear pressure devices depending on specific needs of patients. Types of the positive ear pressure devices. A CPAP, this is mostly widely used PAP device. This machine is set at one single pressure. We also have what's called a bi-level PAP, an auto CPAP or auto bi-level PAP and an adaptive server ventilation. And these are examples and pictures of what these devices look like. Other devices as well. Mechanical therapy, they have the mandibular advancement device. These are devices for patients with mild to moderate obstructive sleep apnea, dental appliances or oral mandibular advancement devices that help to prevent the tongue from blocking the throat and or advance the lower jaw forward can be made. These devices help keep the airway open during sleep. A sleep specialist and dentist with expertise in oral appliances for this purpose should jointly determine if this treatment is best for the individual. Then you have the, have the hypoglossal nerve stimulator. A stimulator is implanted onto the skin of the right side of the chest with electrodes tunneled under the skin to the hypoglossal nerve in the neck and or intercostal muscles between two ribs in the chest. The device is turned on at bedtime with a remote control. With each breath, the hypoglossal nerve is stimulated. The tongue moves forward out of the airway and the air is, airway is open. And this is on the left is what the hypoglossal nerve stimulator look like. This is what you, you go, when you go to the dentist that they may place in your mouth. Invasive treatments for sleep apnea. Um, some people, tonsillectomy is a procedure that removes the tonsil tissue in the back of your throat, which is a common cause of obstruction in children with sleep apnea. Uvalvular papillopharyngeoplasty is a procedure that removes soft tissue on the back of the throat and palate, increasing the width of the airway at your throat opening. And you have the mandibular and maxillary advancement surgery, which is a surgical correction of certain facial ab abnormalities or throat obstructions that contribute to obstructive sleep apnea. And then some people may have to have nasal surgery, which includes correction of nasal obstructions, such as deviated septum. Tissue removal. During this pr procedure, your doctor removes tissue from the rear of your mouth and top of your throat. Your tonsils and adenoids usually are removed at the same time as well during this time. 
tissue shrinkage. Another option is to shrink the tissue in the rear of your mouth and the back of your throat using radio frequency ablation. Jaw repositioning. In this procedure, your jaw is moved forward from the, rem from the remainder of your face bones. This enlarges the space behind the tongue and soft palate, making obstruction less likely. This procedure is known as maxillar mandibular advancement. Implants, soft rods, usually made of poly polyester or plastic, are surgically implanted in the soft palate after you've received local anesthetic. But more research is being, is being done to see if, if, to determine how well this implant works. Nerve stimulation as creating a new airway passageway, which is the last resort where someone may have to get a tracheostomy if nothing else works for them. Other types of surgery may help reduce storing and contribute to the treatment of sleep apnea by clearing or enlar enlarging your air passages. What are the effects of sleep apnea? It's likely that sleep apnea can cause arrhythmias and heart failure because it have because if you have sleep apnea, you tend to have higher blood pressure. In fact, sleep apnea occurs in about 50% of people with heart failure or atrial fibrillation. This is because sleep apnea can cause repeated episodes of oxygen lowering, what, what doctors call hypoxia, changes in carbon dioxide levels, direct effects of the heart due to pressure changes within the chest, and increased levels of markers of inflammation. With the high prevalence of sleep apnea and cardiac arrhythmias and heart failure, essentially a coin flip as to whether the patient has it, experts recommend that you don't delay in seeking the advice of your physician. Conditions of sleep apnea. Effective treatment can generally prevent or resolve serious complications when with sleep, sleep apnea. But if the condition is left untreated, it can have far-reaching effects on your health and well-being. According to the obstructive sleep apnea, according, accordingly, obstructive sleep apnea has been associated with higher risk, again, of diverse range of health problems, including car accidents from drowsy sleeping, cardiovascular disease like the high blood pressure, stroke, heart failure, heart disease, and an abnormal heartbeat. Metabolic disorders include like type, D, type 2 diabetes, pulmonary hypertension, which is high blood pressure in the arteries of the lungs, or arteries of the lungs that places excess strain on your heart. Other complications of, of sleep, sleep apnea, thinking problems such as impaired memory and concentration, mood disturbances, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is, which is an increase in fat deposits in the liver that contribute to serious liver damage. Anesthesia-related complications um, during surgery can also happen. In central sleep apnea, the complications can occur, depend largely on the underlying medical issue causing the breathing to be disordered. Types of pillows of sleep apnea. There are many different pillow types that you can use when you have sleep apnea. As for sleep apnea pillows, there are a few categories that are generally best. Cervical pillows, which are ergonomically designed and primarily intended for back sleepers. And these are what these look like here. You have the Contour CPAP Max pillow. This pat pillow are specifically designed to accommodate a CPAP mask. They're generally featured in tended areas of both edges of the pillow, which leaves space for bulky full face masks and or tubes. The Helix Wedge Pillow. Wedge pillows feature a slope design that helps to elevate the upper body in bed. They are commonly used for lounging in bed while reading or watching television. The Scandvia CPAP pillow is a spe specialty pillow designed for side sleepers. Its contoured shape leaves space for the sleeper's shoulders and the 5.5 inch loft ad adequately supports the head and neck to promote spinal alignment. Additionally, the pillow design is wedge-like, featuring a slight slant design to help improve airway alignment. The built right CPAP pillow, this is, is another pillow um, for those who prefer to sleep on their back despite their CPAP equipment. Other pillows, these are some that I, I looked into um, as well. It, even if you have GERD, it also helps to elevate your head. These are a little more pricey, but they're very good as well. Other wedge pillows, 
from here and how this how you would set up yourself when you use those wedge pillows. How common is sleep apnea? Sleep apnea is a common sleep disorder that may affect as many as one in four adults, although many cases go on, on, on diagnosed. Approximately three to 7% of men in the US, two to 5% of women in the US has it. And it is rare in babies age zero to two years old and common after age two in the US. In Canada, an estimated more than one in five adults also have sleep apnea, similar to those percentages that are here in the um, US. In Jamaica, one in five adults, more males than females have sleep apnea. In St. Vincent's, there weren't really any data on that when I looked up their research. Tips for getting better rest with sleep apnea, using your CPAP properly, cleaning it, working with your doctor, maintaining a healthy weight, adding humidification if needed, alternating sleeping positions and various lifestyle changes. If you're drinking, smoking, wanna stop that. In summary, lifestyle changes that, that is, is encouraged, lose weight if you're overweight, exercise regularly, drink alcohol moderately, if, if at all, don't drink in the hours before bedtime, quit smoking, use a nasal decongestant or allergy medications if you need to clear your nasal passages. Don't sleep on your back, avoid taking sedative medications such as anti-anxiety drugs or sleeping pills. I wanna give special acknowledgement to Sleep Foundation, NIH.gov, PubMed, Cleveland Clinic, Mayo Clinic, as well as the government website of Canada. If there's anything that I did not cover in my summary and you have any questions, please join us in the Zoom room. I'll be happy to answer those questions for you. Thank you for your time and your patience. God bless you. And next Sunday, our topic will be on breast cancer. Have a good day.